Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Steel City Knives. Right, as you can see from the thumbnail, this is my Sheffield Trip knife haul. I bought all of these knives from this place here. Sheffield has a few shops. I, I, I'm not 100% certain how many. I know there's at least two that I know of. This is the one I visited. So each, if I go to Sheffield again, I'm obviously going and visit the other place. But what I'll do, I'll do a designated video just on this shop because I had an absolutely brilliant time. And uh, it was a family trip. As soon as I went to this shop, the missus uh, took the kids and she knew it, uh, it was going to be a long day for a person. <laughs> but she went and kept them busy while uh, she left me in there. And the staff were really nice, really helpful. Uh, Jane, the owner, is very knowledgeable. Um, it's not just a place where there's so much stuff to get there. A lot of Sheffield made stuff there, uh, not just pocket knives. There's a lot of cutlery books uh, and just a wealth of knowledge there and um, some brilliant stuff. But like I say, I'll do a designated video just for that. But anyway, these are the three video, uh, the three knives that I've got. What I'm going to start doing in, on my channel is I like this idea of like different series. Uh, so one, I've named one knife trips. So essentially, I, you know, when I go on holiday, if I seek out a good knife shop, I'll put it on there and I'll start just putting them all in under that playlist if you're just interested in stuff like that. So I've got a lot of different series on the channel, which I love. I love like just categorizing it into these series. And um, I need a title for the when we're sort of going through other people's collections in the community, because I'm going to be doing a couple more videos of Ian's and then we'll move on to the next person. But then we'll keep revisiting those people anyway. But um, yeah, if, you, if anybody's got a good title, put, leave it in the comment section. But yeah, we'll, we'll, I love these series and I've got one more that I'm thinking about doing as well. So it just um, breaks it up for me, uh, gives me a bit of an um, idea of... Um, you know, just a title and a bit of a, a direction, really. But right, so let's get on to the first knife. So I'm not going to go into any of the history. I've done that on a few other videos and I will do in the future for sure. And Joseph Rogers has got an amazing, amazing history. About 300 years of, you know, history within this company alone. So this is just going to be sort of a show and tell. And I'll give you some cost in uh, how much I've paid for them and things like that. So, uh, right. So, uh, you know, very minimal box. Uh, this would probably be classed as a bit of a budget knife, I would imagine. I was, this is as much, <laughs> as crazy as this seems, I'm loving this knife. I'm loving this knife because it wasn't, it was £50, so it didn't really break the bank. Uh, although, you know, I am a budget guy. Um, when we, I, the missus came as, as I was about to decide to buy all the knives. And I had these three knives laid out in front of me. And I said to her, should I just, so the equivalent of these three knives, I could have gone and bought a really premium multi-blade Taylor's Eyewitness. And I thought, look, I could just get one of these uh, and have, you know, this sort of grey or beautiful knife. Or I could get these three. And she said, well, you know, you've got three knives there. And that's kind of my mentality. I am, um, there's a little, what you get on the baggie. I'm still not in that mindset of spending a great deal on one knife. Um, and people, people's budgets are all different. £50 might be an expensive for some people, you know, people's budgets are all over the place. But I think pretty much the most I've ever paid on a knife is £130. So, right, this is the... Um, and I, I like, you know... I think there will be a day when I'll spend more than that. But at the moment, I'm sort of happy where I am. And with, you know, the choices I've made. I probably will one day, obviously, spend a bit more money. Right, there you go. You can pause and read that if you want. That's the paperwork you always get with... Joseph Rogers, I've had quite a few newish ones now, and that's the generic paperwork you get it with it. So yeah, I don't know, it's always changing anyway, isn't it? So, but at the moment, yeah, I don't think I've exceeded £130 on one knife. Uh, and I've got some beauties, I have got some beauties in the collection for that. So there are, they're, you know, they're out there. Right, so... The description for this was Dell Ring Covers. So nothing fancy, nothing special on the uh, cut for the covers, but I love it. I absolutely love it. If you know my channel, you know I love a boy's pattern knife anyway. I should have got my GEC 15 out. Slightly smaller than that. Um, but listen to the walk and talk. Nice and snappy on the clothes. 
But yeah, I love it. And the beauty of going to a shop that we don't often get here in the UK is that you can go through and pick which ones you want. Now, knowing Jane and, and how helpful they are, just ring her up, talk to her, because they are so accommodating, they're so nice. Um, I'm sure, you know, they can try and help you to find the best knife possible. They're a handmade product. They're not always going to be absolutely spot on. And I must admit, the more I'm, what's that, a bit of skin, lovely. Um, the more I'm getting into uh, uh, sort of these sort of knives, you do, you forgive the odd little bit because what you're getting a handmade product, uh, you know, um, machines don't have bad days. So if you want a machine made knife that's all perfect, fair enough, and go and get one. But if you want a handmade product, there's going to be the odd flaw in it now and again. It's never going to be. You know, unless you're paying, you know, the big bucks, it's always, it's never going to be 100% perfect, is it? Let's be honest. Um, if you can make something with your hands 100% perfect, 100% of the times, then, uh, you know, you're talking out your ass. <laughs> because it's not possible, is it? Let's be honest. But right, so we have got a bit of gap in on the back there and it's not centered brilliantly but I, I i absolutely love this i put it in the back in the bag but i have actually been carrying this a bit and uh, and i will be in the future because and i love the finish on the blade i uh, really do got those sort of grind lines almost i'm not 100 percent certain of the blade still i don't think it's carbon i think it's stainless which i'm not bothered by i think that's nice but let's have a look at the tang stamp but yeah I love it. I absolutely love this. And I've tried to find it online. I've tried to find another one. And I can't find it online, which makes it even more. As soon as I walked past it and she was opening up all the covers and things like that, I thought, I am having it. I'm having that. Whatever. I knew I was leaving with this one. <laughs> and there was only a couple in the shop, I think. I had the choice out of two. So, uh, but yeah, I went with this one. But yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. So that was my first choice. A Joseph Rogers, boys pattern, uh, 50 pounds, uh, Delrin covers. It's hafted really nicely. It really is. Uh, like I say, a little bit of gapping on the back there, but I just love it. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to start carrying it some more. Definitely. I think it's an absolute brilliant knife. Right, on to the next one. So I kind of went for a bit of a mixed bag here. So we've got Joseph Rogers, which falls under the Egerton Group, and they've got a few other sort of um, Sheffield companies that they sort of George uh, Walston Home and Iverson, and you know they own a few. And then I've got a Taylor's Eyewitness and a Michael May. Yeah, so uh, quite a good you know range of Sheffield makers here. So what do you think I've got for a Michael May? He's got a bit of a wide, uh, definitely a few patterns that he he does. Uh, I'll show you. Okay, I'll show you quickly. So this is his website. And then what he does, he, he might make the odd little small run of one-offs that are a bit different to you, your normal way of selecting knives. So it's always worth checking out his website to see what's available now because he does do these small little, I suppose you call them like sprint runs, and uh, he'll do them on the odd occasion so you can pick up something completely different. Or he has almost like, it's like a custom knife builder where you get these drop-down boxes and you can select the pattern, the blade type, you cover materials, uh, even if you want Damascus and all sorts of stuff. So you can tailor the knife to whatever configuration you want, basically, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. His website's really polished. It's a really nice website. It's got some good information on there. It's definitely worth a, a visit. So I didn't get any paperwork with this. There you are. We all having a bit of a guess what I went for the ergonomic. So I have carried this a bit. This is how it came. I didn't get the paperwork. Um, I, my missus was quite um, in a rush to get out. To be honest, I've been there a while. So it came in a simple baggie. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It came very dirty. I'm not uh, overly enamoured with the action of it. Um, I've got a, a few Michael May knives. I, I, will it stop me from getting another? Well, definitely not. And this is a user. As you can see there, it's not got the worked. And that's another thing that you can choose on the drop-down box, whether you want the work backspring or not. So uh, I so this was about 80-odd pounds. 
I want to say somewhere around that region, 80 to, I don't think it was more than 90, sort of 80 pounds. So, you know, I didn't get the backspring, uh, the firework. I sort of brought, bought this as a user, which I have been. There was, a, it, the, like I said, the action's not brilliant. I'm hoping it was very, very dirty, very dirty. Uh, a lot of blade uh, sort of grinding dust. I've been oiling it like crazy. I've just given it a bit of an oil as I was beginning to do this um this video so i'm hoping it will let's have a listen let's see what i mean it just needs a good old flush but hold on there we go but yeah i'm still getting some of the residue out of the pivot but um it's not got the best pull in the world um and yeah but you know i'll keep you updated i'm sure it will break in but it's i don't it don't matter how much i flush out the pivot that pull's always going to be the same and it's not it's probably a six and a half. Yeah, it's not a great deal. It's sort of, um, there we are. It's already starting to, but I have carried this a bit and I'm trying to keep, cause there's, I've tried to clean it out and look, I'm pretty much there now, but can you see there's a big old bit of gunk there? And I think in that corner there, and then the more you clean it, there's some there right in that corner and then it just finds its way into the pivot itself so just take a bit of flushing out i think but i don't think that i think that pulls about as much as it's gonna gonna get and then when i did buy it, it had a bit of a wonky you see how it's a bit of a wonky blade grind on it but i'm not like i say i'll, I'll give you the honest um opinion of it but i love michael may knives and I, this is a user for me anyway the action will probably break in it'll probably get a nice walk and talk and as I sharpen it, I'll just get, you know, I'll readdress that. So, but yeah, I mainly bought this as a user. It's the ergonomic pattern, the bog oak covers. They're very oily at the moment, I apologise, but but beautiful. Um, there's some beautiful figuring in the wood. Um, and I don't think it will show, but it is. I love Michael May knives. I love brass and he uses a lot of brass. Um I, this is a pattern from Trevor Ablett. So he bought a lot of equipment from Trevor Ablett when he sort of started up on his own when poor old Trevor Ablett uh, passed away, unfortunately, which was a massive blow to Sheffield. And I hope to do a bit more um, of a video on Trevor Ablett because he was uh, just did some phenomenal knives. And unfortunately, I don't have one in the collection. It's one that I'm always seeking and trying to find. Um, but yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, I, Michael May works with a guy called James. I think I apologise because I refer to him as like his apprentice. I've later found out he's far from an apprentice. He's a good cutler in his own right. He came from the Egerton Group, I believe, uh, and I think they'd have him back in a heartbeat. But a l brilliant pattern. Look at the um, look at the the way it, the covers are here. How it sort of swells out to. Uh, I don't know if this light's going to show it. Let me see if I can swells out slightly to to fill your palm nicely. Um, and, and even though it's got a weak pull, your hand kind of, your finger can sort of choke up here. Um, but yeah, lovely lamb's foot blade. You've still got the, you can tell I've been carrying it a bit because it's starting to get a bit of patina already. You can see the grind lines on this one. So it's sort of um, not a fingerprint magnet. We'll have a look at, oh yeah, I, I just watched some of the footage back from the and tape from that. That is stainless. It says it on the tang stamp, doesn't it? But so um, there's a Michael May Sheffield, England for his stamp. So there you are. It's coming. It's coming. The action's coming. But yeah, the pull's not the best. But with a knife like this, it's, there's a bit of swedging up here just on one side, as you can see there. But a lovely knife, an absolutely lovely knife. And look at the butt up on it as well. But yeah, spot on. Hafton is absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, I love these covers. This bog oak really has got a lot of character. Uh, Knife Raven um, called this uh, an English version of a book 110. And ever since he said that, and I've watched that, I've not been able to get that out of my head. Thank you very much, Knife Raven. <laughs> I can see where he's coming from. But yeah, uh, but I should have got a load of knives up to compare everything to. Um, but um, I'm not very well organized today. Like I say, I just wanted to rattle through and show you what I picked up. But I love love this knife do love this knife i think i'm going to try and make it my mission to get every pattern 
that uh, Michael made does in the collection so we can show it off. But yeah, really nice. No gapping. That's a bit of rubbish that's seeping out of the um of the back spring. But yeah, brilliant knife. I'm really looking forward to carrying this one. And just an absolute beaut. Right, on to the next one. This premier collection. So I knew I was going to get something a bit more premium. And like I said before, there was some beautiful tailors I witnessed there. There was some mother of pearl. Some, they were just gorgeous. And like I say, you got the chance to handle them. And like I said previously, they were going for quite a lot of money. And I'm not quite there yet. But essentially, I could have not got any of these and just got one real sort of... Uh, there was one in mother, mother of Pearl and it was a multi, it was just good. There were some gorgeous knives there, but we'll, we'll look at that when I go in about, we do a video about the shop, but I was going to get one. This was one of their cheaper ones they had in the shop. It was 130 pounds. So again, not that cheap, right in my sort of upper limit. Uh, and again, all collections are different. People might laugh at my, hundred and thirty pound limit and you know if you look at modern knives and what they cost these days and things like that um all collections are different all knife collections are different that's why i like that uh series where we look at everybody else's i relate a lot to ian's the way he sort of sets his collection out in my full sheffield collection i've got like a a set amount that i'm collecting of say joseph rogers Michael Mays, Taylor Eyewitness, Arthur Wright, um, Michael Mays, you know, uh, George Wollstonehome. I've got a set amount. And then what you've got to remember is where we, obviously I'm a UK guy, we can get really vintage antique makers that are no longer in existence. And Sheffield had a phenomenal amount. We can get them really readily available here for a really good price. So you know, I, I probably will start doing collection videos, but um, I'm just starting out. I'm going to build it up a bit more, and then I might do one on GCs. I've just bought a new GC. I've only got a handful of GCs. I've got more Queen cutlery or, or Queen knives than I have GCs, but a lot more. But I do like GCs. You know, there's so... <laughs> You see how a collection gets out of hand. Uh, a lot with Boker. I've got quite a few Bokers, but um, uh, it's not exhausted yet, if you know what I mean. And then, like I said, there's so many German makers and American makers, and you see how it just it it's 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 endless, isn't it? Really. So you have to so almost set limits for yourself. Are you you know? Um, it can really get out of hand quick. Um, and I'm I'm not like I'm I, I like my modern knives as well, and I, I've got I've got a modern uh, video coming out soon, hopefully. So um, you know, there's so many knives out there, <laughs> but I know people go mental for these. I know slick slices. I hope people don't mind. I like name dropping. There was two series I was thinking about doing for the for the channel. One is like a I think I'm going to call it like a brew and a blades, where I just have a cup of tea. I talk about like a knife, because I've got one called Knife Topics. It'll be a similar sort of thing, but this would be more like about the YouTube community and my um, thoughts and feelings about the cutlery industry and makers and this, that and the other. But just uh, um, a bit of a, a cup of tea and a chat with knife knife buddies really that's the general premise of it but i don't know see if you think it'll be a good idea and then the other one was i've got a massive collection of cutlery books so a bit of a like a, a, a geeky sort of video just maybe reviewing a book at a time and going through that and we'll have a little skim through it and i'll tell you what i think of that particular book but right so taylor's eyewitness comes with uh this paperwork um, their premier collection should i say and uh, the, it's absolutely spot on. And that's what they're called Premier Collection because they are inspected and they've got this paperwork for authenticity. And like say, the maker usually um, assessably Lee White, like say, ha hand signs it. So here we go. Now, I've got an older model of the Taylor Eyewitness Slim Barlow. It's not as nice as this. So this is in Buffalo Horn. Um, this is the number and things like that. Um, but yeah, gorgeous knife. And they are, they're stunning. 
and collectors go mental for them. And don't get me wrong, this will not be my last one in the collection. I will buy more. So if you're a bit tight like me, this is the best model because this is probably one of the cheaper ones. If you want to save a few quid but get the same fit and finish, you can get them without the uh, firework on the back. There's still a few knocking about that you can find out there. Um, they do some absolutely gorgeous covers. The ram's horn is definitely a must, isn't it? That buttery translucence. Um, and that's one I will get in the collection just because of how I've always wanted one. I've been watching YouTube for years. They really, uh, now I had the choice out of, I think there was one that was on like a, like a show one that they had out. Then there was one that had beautiful white feathering. And I was talking to a, a gentleman that I was, I was in there for that long. The owner had to pop out with her partner, her husband. I got to meet him. And they'd gone out to do something and they'd come back. I was still in there. <laughs> so uh, and there was a nice lady that was dealing with me. Um, I, I didn't catch a name. And then it went to uh, another gentleman. I they must have worked part time. So I almost got, went through, you know, a few shifts. But um, yeah, the guy, we was weighing it up. There was one that had really nice feathering, like a white in the, in the horn. Um, but... We were sort of like saying, when it's all black like this, it's just really like quite um, a classy knife. So, and I did, I, I went for this in the end, but gorgeous knife. And it's a fingerprint magnet because it's highly polished. But this is one of those knives that you just want to, the hafting is just, there's not a, a, a sharp edge anywhere. It's just gorgeous. It really is. And the centering is pretty much bang on down the middle it's a really high polished blade it's got a lovely walking torque it's got a brilliant pull they are they're just special they're a special knife they really are how many i have in the collection i do not know but we'll see i'm eyeing a couple up now but we'll see because there's always something else that comes along but i know slick loves these uh, and there's a big part of his collection. I know Warthog loves them. I know Knife Raven loves them. And I can see why. They are absolutely stunning. An absolutely phenomenal knife. And I've waffled on for far too long. But yeah, I will not. It's got such a nice pull to it. So well. I'm not going to slam it short. But gorgeous knife. Absolutely gorgeous knife. So let's wrap it up. So the grand total came to £270, so a bit of money, but some phenomenal knives for the collection. All a bit quite dark cover materials, but I've got a lot, uh, a lot of different variations within their uh, collections anyway. So, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I will get these in the wallets now and get these two definitely in. This is something you'd probably carry to a wedding or a christening or something like that if that's your daily user then you're a lucky guy because what imagine having that just pulling that out but yeah right have a good one and i'll see you on the next one cheers <laughs>